Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and welcome to Monday Morning. We are going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, as uh, you're going to find out from my friends Tori and Carl in just a minute, and that is referrals. And I am kind of a nut on relationships and referrals and all the things that they can mean to agents, particularly if they are formalized. Well, when I was doing my research for our new product that we have coming out called Ina Connect, you'll hear more about it, Insurance Needs Analysis Connect, which is basically uh, referrals and relationships. It's more than that, but uh, but it, it formalizes it. That I looked around, and I found Rocket Referrals. Uh, and when I found Rocket Referrals, we went in, and we had our people uh, look at it closely and really like what these guys have done. So what they have done is to uh, uh, formalize, if that's the word, uh, uh, referrals, how, how referrals work. And I thought this is a perfect time to uh, uh, to introduce them to you. So let me tell you who they are. I'll uh, show you their pictures here, just a second. Um, this is uh, Tori and Carl. These are brothers, and they formed this uh, organization. Well, Tori, you, 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 uh, Carl, you tell me. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Tori. Uh, I'm going to introduce my brother Carl here in a second. Um, really, what we wanted to, and first of all, George, thanks for having us on the show as well. I really appreciate you having us, and um, we love chatting with you and, and sharing um, our knowledge back and forth has been great. Yeah. Um, one thing, uh, really, uh, before I go into us in, in too much detail here, I wanted to reiterate something that you said, that it's about relationships, right? It, it always is. And that's the one thing that um, agents really stand out, you know, especially against direct providers. It's, it's about really being able, though, to turn those uh, happy customers are people that really like you and the people that will refer business to you. Um, and from a referral standpoint, agents are missing out on these referrals because they don't have the time to really implement the type of strategy that it takes to get those referrals from everybody that would give them. But there's ways to leverage technology that will amplify these strengths that agents have when it comes to relationships without really increasing the workload. And that's one of the things that we really want to talk about about today and, and, and we'll give some really cool tactics that people can use um, even right after the show. But back to intros, I'm Tori Merritt. Um, between the two of us, uh, me and Carl, we kind of bring this really unique mix between technology and uh, referral marketing and, and relationships. So I bring the technology aspect to things. Um, I have over 13 years in IT development and leadership, but also most importantly uh, from this standpoint is being a certified usability analyst where we really think about uh, how to persuade people to take specific actions and things like that online. A lot of that has helped uh, bring in, in um, a referral standpoint. My brother Carl, um, he's going to talk here in a second. He's really our referral marketing expert. He's um, just uh, uh, got out of the army. He was an intelligence advisor in Afghanistan, um, and uh, has come back. And you know, we founded Rocket Referrals together. But he's also just recently contributed to Insurance Journal and Independent Ma Agent Magazine around referral topics, which we think is really gr uh, great. So, with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Carl. And he's going to share a little bit um, more about you from uh, the the market, anyway. All right, thanks, Tori. Okay, the first thing I want to mention here is a quote that from Robert Roosevelt, the president and CEO of the Independent Insurance and Agents Brokers of America. He says that agents can successfully counter the emerging perception of insurance as a commodity by going opposite with their marketing strategy and fully embracing a local relationship-based strategy leveraging technology. Now, the important thing to notice here is that the, the ripples of technology are really being felt throughout the insurance industry. Um, the general population is becoming more comfortable with computers. I think it's now 56% of Americans have smartphones, for example. And really, they're changing the way that they do business and they get information. But he also recognizes at the same time that one thing that has never changed in the insurance agency, insurance industry, excuse me, and that's that personal relationships are still keen. Um, but for the insurance agents to fully take advantage of their stellar customer service and deep penetration in the local markets, they, they, they shouldn't get swallowed by the wave of technology that's coming over the industry and the more technically savvy culture that we have. Um, but they need to find a way to use the technology that really augments their strengths. Okay, so technology is never going to make great insurance agents, but what it can do is take place of some of the 
some of the manual processes that, that they need to do. Um, it can supplement their agency so that they can automate certain processes at key points in time and do things that would otherwise get overlooked or lost on their desk. <clears throat> so really what you want to do is find ways to use technology that can build on your strengths and aid in organic strength, aid in organic growth. Now, referrals are one of the things that many agents are missing, that we found that a lot of insurance agents are missing out of because a lot of times they're too busy to do everything that it takes to, you know, um, transition a happy, satisfied customer into a loyal customer. And that's one thing I want to talk about here. Um, we've noticed that 83% of customers are, have satisfied customers are willing to refer, but only 29% actually do. So this is really about having those customers that are satisfied and happy with your agency, but getting them to actually refer you. So um, this is a 54% of revenue that you're missing out on on this referral business that we're talking about here. <clears throat> so, let me go to the next one here. So now, one of the things I want to note on this is that there's a difference between satisfied customers and loyal customers. Satisfied customers are those people that, you know, you're doing everything right, they're happy, um, but loyal customers are those that are actually um, referring you, those people that are actually, you know, supporting your ambassadors for your company. So it's really a transition from getting the those, those satisfied customers, the people that are happy, to to loyal customers, ones that are going out there and telling their friends about you. Um, you know, Harvard Business School, for example, defines loyal customers as those that have retention, repeat business, and referral. So really it's those that make you more money. So you're doing everything right, making them happy. Now how do we bring them over there and transition to the loyal customers, the people that are out there referring you actively? Hey, Carl, let me ask you something. Well, let's go sure. back one time. If you, well, if you can go back. Yeah. Who, who is uh, Fred? Reichheld. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Fred Reichheld. He is the guy who wrote. Um, it's a book called The Loyalty Fa Loyalty Effect and the Ultimate Question 2.0. He is an ambassador for uh, the Net Promoter Score system, which is a system used by many of the largest companies right now, including Southwest Airlines, Apple, for example. And he introduced a survey. It's a customer loyalty survey that says, you know, from zero to ten, what's the likelihood that you recommend recommend our business? And he found that with this question alone, um, he got but yeah. For example, a really high response rate to it, and that they're able to identify the customer base that is actually willing to refer them. Now, this has a lot of value for a company because uh, obviously a happy and satisfied loyal customer base is, is worth some money to you. But he also recognized that there's a big gap between those customers that said that they would recommend and those that do. And in fact, 65 to 85 percent of the factors said that they were either satisfied or very satisfied. So, you know, people that are leaving your customer company, a lot of times they are satisfied with you, but they're not necessarily a loyal customer. So he's also recognizing that gap as well. Okay, what was the name of that book one more time? Um, loyalty Effect. And loyalty Effect, ultimate, okay. okay. The loyalty Effect and the Ultimate Question 2.0. Okay, good. Thank you. Go ahead. So I'll kind of take it back from uh, Carl here and talk about the strategy. Um, there's really, the, the interesting thing, right, is um, it's important to think about the the strategy that you're going to approach and, and then from there be able to apply technology to that. So I wanted to go through the strategy that we think can help you move that needle, capture some of that 54% of people that are willing to, re to refer. The first is to make sure that you're setting the referral mindset. Um, you have to really get people to recognize that um, you know, they can refer, then you have to be able to, they have to recognize that they know how to refer. There's all kinds of different things. We're going to show some tactics um, after this. The next piece is really identifying those referral sources. Once you know who it is that's in that 54% or the 89% that are willing to give referral, you can start to target them with communication. And that way you're giving, you're, you can give personalized communication to people rather than uh, bulk mail and things like that. Uh, the next is relationship building. So once you've identified those people, really focus on building the relationship with them. Make sure that uh, they know how important you are to their business, but not from a market standpoint, from a relationship standpoint. And then give them opportunities to refer. Um, you know, and we're going to show what some of these uh, things are that you can do here in a minute. And then obviously repeat. Uh, this is a strategy that needs to be done consistently with every new customer or even actually lead that comes in the door. So now people are referring. You know, they 
quite honestly, don't refer people to give you business. They refer people to help their friends and family. So it's important to make sure that the content and everything that you write about uh, referrals and, and everything you communicate to them says that you're going to take care of the people that they refer. Uh, personalized communication. Again, you have to make sure that the people that receive communication from you feel like you're communicating with them on a personal one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, bulk mail and things like that sometimes can be really ineffective from referrals because um, it's impersonal. And multiple touch points. Um, you have to be able to hit people on the phone, in person, um, over the uh, in direct mail, handwritten cards, um, through the internet, through social media. All of the things have to really work together. And then be able to measure the results. Look at how are these things actually, uh, which things are moving the trigger and be able to, or sorry, moving the needle, I should say, and uh, be able to adjust accordingly. So let's talk about some specific tactics. Um, first, the mindset. How do we get people into the referral mindset? Well, one of the uh, first things that you can do, quite honestly, from a lead standpoint, right? We've all seen this question, how did you hear about us? It's on our forms and things like that. Well, uh, this is not an effective question for you from a referral mindset or even really from collecting information about how you heard about us. The question that you need to ask is, who was it that referred you to us? From a psychological standpoint, the person starts to think, wow, they get a lot of referrals. Um, and quite honestly, if they were referred, they're going to tell you. Um, and you can even add a little bonus on the end. You can say, because we'd like to send this person a thank you. And now they feel they know that referrals are appreciated. So even before the customer even becomes a customer, you know, just as a lead, you're already starting to set that mindset. So from a technology standpoint, Anywhere, if you can change that how did you hear about us question, change it to who was it that referred you. The funny thing is, if they didn't come from a referral, they, let's say they came from Google, they'll actually say, well, I didn't, get it. I didn't come from a referral, I came from Google. Um, the psychology behind this is this is a different question, so people will start to access it differently in their, in their mind. Um, next, identifying referral sources. One of the best ways that you can do that is through the Net Promoter Survey. Uh, Carl talked a, li a little bit about um, that here, and it really is one of the most powerful things that you can do to find people that are willing to refer, but also start to collect some of that analytical data. And when we talk about uh, referrals, it's not always positive referral sources. Sometimes we're talking about detractors, people that are potentially taking business away from you. And you're going to uncover those in the Net Promoter Survey as well. Uh, for example, Rocket Referrals, when we send out surveys, we have customers that will get a notification when they get a low score like a zero or one, and they'll call up that customer right away to either one, fix that issue with the detractor, or two, move them on to another customer or to another business that might be a better fit for them. And then the same goes for the promoters too. Um, people are getting the notifications for a 9 or a 10 and they're calling them up right away to you know, say that they appreciate them. And then what other uh, demographics can you uh, determine from your customer base? So if you are tracking referrals with the previous question by asking who was it that referred, you can start to look at, well, what are the things that are this all of our referral sources have in common. They uh, typically, are they in one specific geographical region? Are they of a certain age? Do they have certain products? What are the things that help me identify who these referral sources are? And then relationship building is the next uh, part of the strategy. So make sure that you're providing those wow moments. I should have capitalized wow here. Um, but the interesting thing is it doesn't take a lot uh, to really provide these wow moments. What we're talking about is exceeding expectations. And if you think about what the expectations are from you know, an insurance standpoint, it's obviously going to be different from different lines. And you know, this is really one of the things that um, you as an agent are going to be really good at defining. But um, once you know who these referral sources are, it's easy to target them. So for example, one of the things that uh, we do at Rocket Referrals is we send customers uh, handwritten welcome cards when they sign up for a new service. It's just so one of those things that uh, people aren't typically used to 
to getting. Um, and we all know how important those things are, but it's important to continue to do them consistently over time. And actually, that was my next thing. Um, and personal phone calls. Um, make sure that you're not just calling when you need to call. Uh, sometimes it's okay to pick up the phone and uh, give someone a call and say, hey, we appreciate your business. We want to know if uh, there's anything we can do for you, if anything's changed in your situation. You know, you can think of a good reason to, for the call, uh, but um, the, the trick is make sure that you're calling on those referral sources. And again, it's not really a time to specifically ask for a referral, but to build that relationship. Because when you build the relationship, the referrals are going to come. And increase referral opportunities. So um, when you're doing things like the Net Promoter Survey, uh, for example, when they answer positively to those, you need to, and you know, you're asking them, hey, can we share the comments? You need to say, will you put this on Facebook? Um, it's almost like they're saying, yeah, I will recommend you, and now you're giving them an opportunity to actually do it. The average person has two or three hundred Facebook friends. Um, if you can get them to comment about you on their wall, not on your wall, uh, the people that are going to your agent's Facebook page are people that already are customers that like you. You want to get your customers to talk about you on their wall, which has more value. Testimonial requests. We tell people always collect testimonials, even if you're not going to use them, because what that does is it gets that person to practice their pitch, and that stores uh, that what that comment about you in a different part in their brain, once they write it down or type it in and say that they'll share it, um, now they're committed to it. And people tend to stay consistent with things that they say and do in the past. So testimonial requests are very important. Essentially, they are a referral. And then, obviously, you're going to have um, testimonials that you can use on your website. Um, some of the customers that we've seen have collected over 150 testimonials in three months' time. We look at it that like, okay, there's 150 testimonials that you can use on your marketing material, but I see it as 150 more people that are six or seven times more likely to give a referral than they were before they gave that testimonial. Referral cards. This is something that some of our customers have chosen to do, uh, where, and, and we love this. The idea is give your customers something that they can give to their friends or family that's only valuable when they give it to their friends and family. So people love to be that go-to person in the neighborhood or you know the, the person who is the, the guy to go to when you need to know where, what should I do about something. So we want your customers to be the person that their friends and family go to when they need insurance or um, you know, whatever type of insurance it is. So by giving them some discount, an example, one of our customers um, will say, oh, I can't remember, if it's not a free quote, it's, it's some giveaway that they have in their office and say, come in, give this to your friends and family, they can come into the office and get um, a, a bag, I can't remember exactly what it is, but they come in, they basically um, are handing out referrals, you know, their friends and family are coming into the office to collect this giveaway, um, but really it's a referral. And repeat. It's a very important to, to keep up with things and specifically thinking those referral sources. Um, when someone refers, they're more likely to do it again if you thank them. Um, the people who give referrals are obviously um, a referral source and you need to make sure that you treat them very well. Um, we've seen people after they refer one time, they'll refer another two or three times in the next few months. Um, this is especially true, believe it or not, of new customers. If you get a new customer that gives you a referral, um, it builds this kind of community around you, right? It's, um, let's say, a new guy uh, bought insurance from you and he's really happy with you and he refers one of his buddies at the office. Um, that can kind of snowball if you thank them appropriately. Hey, hey uh, and, uh, sorry. Let me ask you yeah. something in just a second. Do you, on the referral uh, situation uh, there, and you thank them, do you send them the results? Uh, just Mr. Jones, thanks for your referral. We sold blah, blah, blah. Yes, absolutely, if you can. Um, what, it, it depends on what the, um, the, the yeah. 
the laws are around privacy. Okay, I don't know if you want to exactly tell them what you sold or when or whatever, but um, we we tell people to send what we call a referral update, and it says thanks for the uh, referral. We're off to a great start with Joe. We're sure to take care of him. You know that kind of thing. Again, you want to make sure. Again reassure that you'll take care of their referrals. It's a very, very important step because um, people are people sometimes feel like they're putting their neck out on the line, right? Uh, yeah. When they refer their friends and family, they want to know that you're going to take care of them. So when you can follow up with them and say, hey, we got so-and-so a great deal, just wanted to let you know that we uh, took great care of them. And I guarantee you that person will refer again if you do that. Got it. So some of the results that we've seen uh, after implementing this strategy, we have three different company scenarios that we have here. And um, they vary from three to nine times more customers through referrals. And so we have a couple of different scenarios here um, that we kind of play out before and after implementing Rocket Referrals. And basically, Rocket Referrals, I haven't really talked a lot about what our product does, but what we do is automate that process that, um, you know, we kind of talked about. We implement that strategy that we discussed, and we have many different tactics to do it. So, these specific companies, uh, we linked to their agency management system and pulled the data in, and basically ran the referral program for them. And these are the results that they've started to see. Um, some of them have, like, one customer has been uh, with us for only a couple of months here, while others have been with us a little bit longer. Um, but you can start to see how things really start to snowball, you know, when you get the word of mouth and referrals really rolling, which is really exciting for us to see. We we get a kick of looking at these numbers. I bet. So is the so is the customer. I bet. Holy mackerel. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a, that's um, a big jump. Yeah, and the next. Yeah, and quite honestly, uh, we were surprised how quick some of them actually started to see results. Yeah. Um, you know, this guy, for example, he's seen. Um, what is that, three times more average monthly referrals. This guy saw several in the first few months. And it really depends on, you know, what kind of referral strategy did, the, did our customer have before, what did they have after, um, you know, and, and so there's all kinds of different scenarios. I also want to mention that it, it also depends on what kind of agency they are. If you're an agency that, you know, takes care of its customers and you have a really satisfied customer base, again, going back to what I said, it's, it's about bringing them from satisfied to loyal. It's about making them pull that trigger on getting referrals. It's about hitting the touch points in certain specific points in time so that if you have this really this backlog of, of people that would be willing to give a referral, it's about getting them in the mindset to do so. So that's why you see the snowball really take off is because it's about getting these people to take the, or I'm sorry, pull the trigger on the referrals. It's not about making happy customers. It's about getting them to act. Exactly. Right. Yeah, nobody ever asked me before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so this is kind of what it means as far as average yearly referral premium. So what we did is we took an average of all of the customers that we had prior data for, and um, we looked at how much premium uh, in a year were they getting through referrals, and then how much would that mean after if we annualized it, mm -hmm. um, which is huge difference in, in our opinion. Um, I, I was just really... Quite honestly, this is really new data that we came up with in the last couple of weeks. So we were really excited to um, see these type of results. Yeah, good. I like them. And so real quick, how it works, I'm going to zoom through this um, because um, it, just how Rocket Referrals really works is, again, it, it's really super simple. We take a data import, and really the whole idea behind Rocket Referrals is to do all the hard work, right? So we wanted to create something that would take the data, identify those re referral sources, and schedule the communication that implements that strategy that I talked about, and then have, give you the ability to monitor your progress to kind of see how many referrals are coming in. One thing that we don't do, quite honestly, George, though, is we haven't figured out a way to automatically ask people who was it that referred them. That's still the agent's job, right? That's still their job. Oh, sure. And that's a valuable piece, right? But yeah, once yeah. they ask that question and they put it in the system, we can start to track those things Yep. and um, help them monitor their progress and show um, who are – we can basically show a tree of referrals. So it's kind of neat how we put it together. You can see that 
um, John Smith referred Jane and Jane referred Joe and uh, now you can kind of see what customer did I bring in that's provided me this huge uh, lineage I might say of referrals and um, I added some contact information here for people that are interested and uh, would like a personal demo um, you know give us a call shoot us an email if you ask more questions um, like I, I tell everyone, we love to talk about referrals um, and give away any education that we can because uh, we really want to see this industry kind of all rise together. So uh, we love, you know, we have a great blog that we talk about referrals and um, all kinds of interesting topics as well. So we're always happy to just have a discussion over referrals too. Well, you've got a wonderful program. I've, uh, we've really looked at it in depth, and I and I like it. And if people will use it, it's going to be very, very uh, productive for them. I one of the things you have is it's a personal. Uh, uh, you have a way of uh, they give you their personal uh, signature. I mean, their 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 writing. And that's, yeah. that's that's that, that's and, and so from then on, they can send a quote unquote personal in their own handwriting, but it's not. Yeah, really that's one of the best things. You know, I've we've had customers send notes to their family <laughs> um, just because you know it's easy for them and um, some people like to give us their handwriting others will say well I don't have very good handwriting so we have plenty that people can choose from but it basically allows people to send this personalized communication at scale and consistently over time and um, it, that's one of the things when we before we built Rocket Referrals we went in and interviewed many different insurance agents and we would ask if they do these things and a lot of them would say yeah, I do them, but unfortunately, I don't do it consistent. And um, it really is a numbers game. When you're talking about moving the needle from that 20-some percent of people who actually give referrals to the 80-some percent that are willing to do it, it ha you have to be consistent about things. And um, it's very difficult to do unless you're leveraging technology to do it. No, I think you guys came along with the right idea at the right time. That's for sure. Well, listen, I want to thank you again. And we're going to be working together, we hope, uh, on uh, some new things that we're putting together, as I mentioned before. And we hope to have Rocket Referrals right as part of a, a new program on relationships and, and more. And you're going to see a lot more about it. Uh, but at any rate, thanks, guys. And, and I'll be, uh, you, we'll be publicizing you. In, uh, in the meantime, uh, I want to uh, suggest anybody listening to us, if you have anyone in the whole industry that you'd like to hear, let me know. I'll I'll get because we uh, you know we always like to have new things and people you want to hear and know about. I don't mind asking them. I haven't had very many turn me down so far. They better not. I'll come after them with you know. But at any rate, and then he, uh, uh, and, and incidentally, if you want to forward any of these, you just go to roughnotes.com on the front. You'll see our the archive on their homepage or our agenciesonline.biz. And you'll see the archive. You'll see Monday morning there, and you'll see all these guys. I don't know how many there are now. Seventy or something, sixty, uh, in there. And you can go down there and you forward them because once you you start it, you have up in your browser the uh, uh, the link, and you can forward it to anybody you want to. So may I suggest that you do that? And then also, don't forget to go back to the uh, uh, email, and you can always go to the uh, E&O tip of the week, or you can always go to the quiz flash, and those are always good to have. So again, gentlemen, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be, you'll be hearing from me, I can promise you, and I hope you'll be hearing from a lot of our people. Awesome. Well, thanks for having us. really appreciate it. My pleasure.